Welcome to my another video on Google Cloud Digital Leader Certification and today I'm going to explain you what is the concept of regions and zones in Google Cloud. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to understand what is region and zones in Google Cloud. So I'll go through a very simple use case and then I'll explain you why we need regions and zones in Google Cloud. So let's say we have a fictitious company named Hello Cloud who are selling environment friendly products and they want to create their online presence. Now they are planning to publish their websites along with their applications, internal applications from where their customers can search the inventory, they can buy the product, they can return the product, they can, you know, customers can provide reviews of their products and all these things, right? So this is the way they, this Hello World company, they want to create their online presence. So few things that we need to know about this company is like, you know, their head office is in Toronto, Canada, and their current data center is also in Toronto, Canada. And they have customers from the entire globe. Like they have literally customers from all over the world. Now let's say with the current setup, what are the problems they're facing? As I just mentioned you like, you know, they have only one data center that is in Toronto, Canada. The main problem they are facing is the high latency, which is basically like, you know, if they have a customer which is who is probably in you know Australia or New Zealand, that person when access the website, that person will see, uh, will, will find a little slowness in the application because the application is getting served from a Toronto and these two uh, locations are quite far. So there is a high latency. That's one issue. Second issue is the availability. So let's say they have only one data center and if that data center goes down, then customers will not be able to access the application. So these are the two problems they are having with their current setup. So let's see what they can do to solve this problem. <coughs> so what they did is basically they created one more data center in Toronto, Canada. And with that, their high latency is still there because if the customers is still, you know, trying to access the website from other part of the world, like, you know, Australia, India, or, you know, B B Switzerland or New Zealand, which is a little, which is quite far from Toronto, Canada, the customers will still face the slowness. Availability, it's kind of partially solved. So let's say if one data center is going down, application can still be solved from the another data center. But the question is like, you know, what will happen if both the data centers are down? It's the same problem. Customer will not be able to access the application, right? So our problems are a little bit of solved, but not fully solved. So let's see what we can do. So what we can do, we can create two different data centers, right? One in Toronto, Canada, one in Zurich, Switzerland. With that, what is happening? High latency, it's partially solved. Why? If a customer is you know, accessing the application from Toronto or from Zurich or, you know, kind of close to Toronto and Zurich, they will find that application very fast. But if that if the customer is like, you know, quite far from any of this data center, it's still the same problem. They will find the application is very slow. So the high latency problem is still there. It's partially solved. Availability, it's fully solved because what will happen if like, you know, if the entire Toronto data center is down, then you will your application will still be solved from the Zurich, uh, Zurich uh, data center. So the problem that we saw previous slide, it's actually solved. Now think this way, like, you know, if my company is a global company and I want to make my global footprint, right? I want to make sure my application is highly available and people are trying, people who are more my customers who are trying to access the application, they should be able to access the application very fast. So what should I do? Should I keep on, you know, uh, implementing data center in all the regions? Like, you know, should I do this way? Like in the global map, should I click on, you know, investing money and put data center in all the way? We can do that, but is it an easy task? Is it a cost effective? Probably not. And that is the reason why Google Cloud uh, will be helpful for your uh, implementation. So let's see how Google Cloud can help you to solve the problem. So this is the time when we'll talk about the region. So Google Cloud is having a concept of regions and zones. So regions are nothing but the geographical location where you can host your application. So currently, when you are 
writing your application, your focus should be on the business logic. Your focus should not be on where I should put the application because my developer center, my development center probably in Toronto, and but my customers are across the globe. So should I be worried about, you know, uh, where should I host the application? Probably not. Google Cloud, let Google Cloud think about that, you know, uh, problem. You, you leave that to Google Cloud and Google Cloud will make sure uh, they have enough regions so that you can host your application in multiple regions. So as of today, Google Cloud is having 29 regions and this number is keep on increasing every year. So now what are the advantages of having regions in Google Cloud? The high availability. So you don't need to worry about where you will host the application. Google Cloud will take care of that. Google Cloud will provide you 29 regions as of today and you can choose any of the region or multiple regions to host your application so that your application is highly available. Low latency, definitely. If you are hosting your application in multiple regions, the chances of you know your customers you know accessing the application faster. And the important thing is the government uh, regulations, right? Sometimes you know each government having their own regulations. Like for example, if I'm if I'm uh, putting some banking or in, you know insurance data, I don't want my data to go outside of my um, geographical location, right? So in that case, it it makes sense to host the application within that region. So. This, these are the three advantages I can see immediately uh, by using regions from the Google Cloud. Now, what is zones, right? Zones in Google Cloud are nothing but multiple geographical location within the same region. At least each region will have three zones and each zones will have one or more clusters. And what do you mean by clusters, right? Clusters are nothing but a physical infrastructure that is available on the data center and these zones are connected through low latency link and as of today uh, we know I, I saw you in the previous slide like google is having 88 zones and the number is keep on increasing so so why we need zones when we have a region why we need zones right the reason is let's say i want to host my application in the east coast right then within the east coast I have East Coast of Canada. Let's, let's take an example. If I want to host my application within the East Coast of Canada, then within that East Coast of Canada, I can have multiple zones, one in Toronto, one in Montreal, one in Quebec, right? I'm just giving I'm, I'm just I'm just giving some examples. So these are the different zones where we will be hosting our application. The, the advantage is that these zones are very much connected with a very low latency link. And one of the zones goes down, then other two zones will, will still be able to help you know, serving the application. So that's the advantage of zones in Google Cloud. Let's take an example of regions and zones. As you can see, uh, we have a region called Toronto and the name is like North America dash Northeast two. And these are the corresponding zones. So zones are always ends with uh, dash a dash b and dash c so if you can see it's a north america northeast two dash a similarly dash b and dash c similarly we have a region called montreal whose short name is north america northeast one and the corresponding zones are like northeast one a northeast one b and northeast one c now to understand regions and uh, zones you can go to this section cloud.google.com slash about locations here you will find like these are the 29 regions they have today as of today 88 uh, zones and these are the different you know regions which are which they have there in mind and they are coming soon like doha paris milan uh, different ones right now uh, if i come to uh, come a little uh, end of this page here uh, these are the different uh, uh, country like americas in americas they have this many regions in Europe, in Asia Pacific, in multiple region. And if you choose one of them, let's say example, if I go to the multiple region and choose US, then I can see like these are the, <coughs> these are the uh, regions they have like North America, Northeast one, which is basically from Montreal, Northeast two, which is basically from Toronto. So this is the way how you can understand or how you, how you will be able to know what are the different regions and different zones that Google Cloud is, you know, providing you right now. Thank you everyone. I hope this video is helpful. Please hit, hit the like icon and please subscribe to my channel and my blog to get update about all my upcoming videos. In the next video, I'll show you how you can create your first virtual machine uh, in Google Cloud. So till then, stay safe. Goodbye.